What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again today bringing you guys a new video for my Madden 25 Ultimate Team Series and today what you're going to be learning how to do is get four baller wide receivers for under 30,000 coins. Now if you're new to the series I want to welcome you but I also want to direct your attention to the description below because there you're going to find some of the other positions that we've already done. So far we've gone through offensive line, defensive line, cornerbacks and safeties. And today I want to focus on the big time playmakers in your offense. That's right, the wide receiver position. Now before we get started, I want to give a quick disclaimer. Uh, because I think that sometimes people get a little bit confused on what we're doing in this series when we compare these cards. Um, I, what I typically do is compare a budget card, so a card that's somewhere between usually 2,500 to 7,500 coins, somewhere in that range. And I compare it to a card that's usually 5, 10, sometimes 20 times as expensive. And the reason that we do that is not because I'm trying to say that these cards are actually necessarily better than the more expensive cards, but I'm trying to show you that you can get a good card, something that's going to be fairly comparable for significantly less money than the more expensive cards. So obviously if you've got the money and you can just throw it out there, whatever, go buy the expensive player. These guys are typically going to be better than the budget cards. But the reason that we're doing this series is because we're trying to find out what cards are the most valuable for the amount of coins that you have to spend. So if you spend 2,500 coins and it's a fairly comparable card to a card that's 50,000 coins, well guess what? You just saved yourself 47,500 coins and you can use that to upgrade at other positions. So think about that and that's why we do this series. We also do it for the people that are just getting started and want to get some good players and not spend a ton of coins because they haven't done enough solo challenges, they haven't done head-to-head -head seasons, and they're not so experienced on the auction block. So with that being said, let's get into the first set of wide receivers that we're going to be comparing today. So up first, we've got the 91 overall Marlon Brown Final Edition card, and it's an elite version, and we're going to be comparing that to the 99 overall Jerry Rice Legend card. So let's get started by taking a look at the categories that we're going to be comparing today. And of course, there are a ton of things that I don't have on this chart. You can go to Mudhead and compare them if you're interested. But I think that these eight things are typically the most important things for wide receivers, at least in my opinion. So you might have your own opinions. If you do, leave them in the comments. Let's talk about it. But these things are the major ones for me. We've got speed, catching, catch in traffic, spectacular catch, jump, route running, release, and run blocking. And then the last thing that we compare is height and their average price on the auction block. So the first thing that you're going to see, of course, is that a lot of these statistics are very similar to one another. We actually have two attributes where they're exactly the same, speed and jumping. They're both 94 at speed and 93 at jumping. Now, as you might expect, there are definitely areas where the Jerry Rice card excels over the Marlon Brown card. And those areas are catching, catch in traffic, route running, and release. And the catch in traffic one is one of the ones that I think is overlooked the most because a lot of passes are contested in Madden. And it's not necessarily that you're getting hit while you ca catch the ball, but just that there's other players around. So if you throw up a fade route or things like that, the catch in traffic stat does go into that. The other thing, of course, the catching, Jerry Rice is eight better than the Marlon Brown card in catching. But Brown is still pretty respectable with 90 catching, 90 catching traffic. And then the other thing is that the Marlon Brown actually does have better spectacular catch than the Jerry Rice. I know that's insane, but he actually does. He has 93 versus Jerry Rice's 92. So again, very comparable, but the Marlon Brown is a little bit better. Now, route running. This is the thing that Jerry Rice's card is significantly better than the Marlon Brown card at. It is 96 at route running. So when it's doing its comeback routes and he's running slants and things like that, he's going to be very precise with the routes that he runs, whereas the Marlon Brown's going to be a little more sloppy. He's not going to get quite as much separation. But at the same time, he still does have that nice speed, and he's still got decent release at 93. So if there's a press, for example, he's going to be able to get off that press most of the time. The other thing that I think is very nice about this Marlon Brown card is that it is six foot four. There are not very many receivers in this game that are bigger than Marlon Brown, and that's a nice advantage to have. He is actually two inches taller than the Jerry Rice card. Six two is about, I, I guess I would say it's a little bit taller than average for a wide receiver, but right around average. And the Marlon Brown card does have the nice six four. It also has the nice 93 jump. 
So there aren't very many corners or maybe not any corners in this game that are going to be able to out jump Marlon Brown for a ball. So that's always good to have. And that's why I like this Marlon Brown card. At 8,000 coins, it is about one seventh the price of Jerry Rice. And although that still makes him the most expensive budget card that we're putting in today's video, he is definitely worth it and I think that over time the final edition cards are going to drop a little bit in price so if you pay attention to the auction block and you're watching closely as these other players are starting to come up and and the older guys are not quite as sought after you might see that the Marlon Brown does drop a little bit in price and once that happens it's only going to make him more valuable in comparison to this Jerry Rice card so that's it for the first comparison let's go on to the second one up next, we have got the 93 overall Fantasy Edition Doug Baldwin card, and we're going to be comparing it to the 99 overall Isaac Bruce Legendary card, the Madden 25 Edition. And I imagine that the first thing that you're going to notice is that there's a lot of red on the Doug Baldwin side. And this is a great example of a card that is not as good as the Isaac Bruce card. It's really not. It's not as good as the Isaac Bruce card. However, it is very close in almost every major thing that we look for at wide receiver. And you're gonna spend 65,000 more coins for the Isaac Bruce card than you do the Doug Baldwin. So first of all, speed. There's only one difference. Isaac Bruce is a little bit faster, catching one difference, jumping same, catching traffic and spec catch, very close to one another once again. Route running, there is a five point difference here. The Isaac Bruce does have 97 route running, making it one of the better route runners in this whole game. But Doug Baldwin's still very respectable at 92 for route running. He's still going to be able to get separation, and uh, you're not going to worry too much that he's going to be getting out of position or anything like that. The biggest area that there is a difference between these two cards is the release. And the Isaac Bruce with 93 release is pretty good. Doug Baldwin, only 84 release is he's going to have trouble. I'm not going to lie to you guys. He's going to have trouble against some of the stronger cornerbacks. If they go up and press him, if you've got a Patrick Peterson combine card or something, the Doug Baldwin's going to have a tough time against that card. However, most people don't have elite cornerbacks when it comes to press. They have the guys that are good in coverage. So a lot of times the Doug Baldwin card can still scrape by with its 84 release against corners that are not quite as strong, that don't have quite as high of a press attribute. The other thing is that the Doug Baldwin card is only 5'10", which makes him a little bit short for a wide receiver. Isaac Bruce is a little short himself. He is two inches taller still, though, than the Doug Baldwin, so that is something that we need to take into consideration. He is going to do a better job going up and getting the ball. But at the same time, though, I don't think that you're going to have a huge problem with Doug Baldwin. He's not a smurf, and the 94 jump does help make up for it. So overall, I think that the Doug Baldwin card is a great value at only 5,000 coins. This is the kind of guy that you can play in the slot, and he's going to do pretty well for you. And in my opinion, the Isaac Bruce card is kind of overpriced, considering the fact that he's not greatly better than the Doug Baldwin card, really in anything that's majorly important for wide receivers. So that's going to do it for this comparison. Let's go on to number three. In our third grouping, we're going to be comparing the 93 overall Demarius Thomas Elite card, Road to the Playoffs, and we're going to be comparing it to the Captain Edition Julio Jones 95 overall Elite card. And there is a decent sized price difference here. There's 33,000 coins between the two of them. But again, much like the Doug Baldwin card in our last slide, these cards are very comparable to one another. There's actually an advantage for Demarius Thomas. He does have 95 speed versus the Julio Jones 94 speed. They're the same in catching. They're the same in run blocking. And every other statistic, there's only really like a one to three point advantage in any of these categories in favor of Julio Jones. So the catch in traffic being 92 versus Demarius is 89. That is a little bit low on Demarius Thomas side. But at the same time, though, I still think that 89 is good enough that he's going to be able to make most catches, especially when you pair it with the 94 catch statistic. And this is really the kind of wide receiver that you can use realistically as a wide receiver one. I've had problems with my Deion Sanders. I've had problems with my Patrick Peterson containing this Demarius Thomas card. I mean, when you add in the fact that it's six foot three with 94 jump, there just aren't many receivers that are more physical. And that's the thing that I think is such an advantage for this Demarius Thomas card. It has great speed. It's it's very strong, has nice release. It's really not weak in anything other than maybe catching traffic, like I mentioned. 
And even though it's 7,000 coins, it's absolutely worth it, and it makes it into today's budget episode with ease. So let's move on to the final comparison for today. And the cards that we're comparing are the 92 overall Final Edition Kenny Stills and the brand new Free Agent 98 overall Steve Smith card. Now, again, very similarly to what we've seen in some of the other ones so far, there's a lot of red on the Kenny Stills side. But again, we're comparing the value of the cards. So for 7,500 coins, you get this Kenny Stills card versus 55,000 coins for the Steve Smith card. So I want you to take a look at the difference in these attributes between these cards. Speed, only one difference. Steve Smith is a little bit faster. The catching, there's a four difference. Catch and traffic, three. The spec catch is actually one in favor of Kenny Stills. Not a big difference. The jumping is one difference. Route running, this is the biggest difference that you're going to see between these cards. The Steve Smith does have 95 route running, which is an excellent attribute. Kenny Stills at only an 88, kind of similar to the Marlon Brown, a little bit sloppy from time to time with his route running, but overall he's still pretty quick, so he's able to get separation, I think. And then uh, the 86 release versus the 90 release, that can sometimes be a little bit low. Kenny Stills is, you know, going to get beaten up a little bit, like I mentioned before with the Doug Baldwin card. He, he's going to have some problems with the guys like Patrick Peterson or the guys uh, like Aqib Tlaib that have really nice press. But overall, this card is really, really good. The other thing that goes in his favor against this Steve Smith card is that he is six feet tall. And that's actually a three inch advantage over the Steve Smith. So even though he does only have a 93 jump versus the Steve Smith 94, he's going to actually do better when the ball is in the air. He's going to be able to go up and get it easier. And that's something that I think might get kind of overlooked when you just look at the attributes alone. So at six foot tall, again, he's not a giant by any means, but he's tall enough. And the Steve Smith at 5'9 is basically a midget. And when you consider the fact that Smith is almost eight times as expensive as Stills, I just don't think it's worth it. I think the value is in favor of Kenny Stills in this case. So that's going to do it for the comparisons today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press that like button below and leave a comment for me as well. Let me know if you guys have questions, if you have comments, if, if I missed anything. I'm glad to answer your questions. And of course, I want to know what position do you guys want to see next? We've done cornerbacks, we've done receivers, safeties, offensive line, defensive line. What's next? What do you guys want to see? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something useful. Don't forget to press that subscribe button so that you can know when my next video gets launched. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.